When I want to add text or notes to my drawing, I have two choices. Looking up here on the Home tab, across to my Annotation tool palette, I have a button for multi-line text, and I have a button for single line text. For more choices, I can go to my Annotate tab. Looking down here, under Text, I have access to my multi-line text editor, and I can quickly set the text style or I have access to my text style manager. Because text is style driven like our dimensions or multi-leaders, generally you'll create text styles that are available in your drawing and set them for the different text that you want to insert. To start my multi-line text, I'll click on the button and it wants me to specify the first corner of a window. So I'll click and pull a window that will become my text box. When this opens, my ribbon panel changes to my text editing tools. With these palettes for style, for example, or formatting, I can then control the multi-line text. This has a look and feel very similar to your word processor, and it works much the same way. On the formatting, you have a place where you can set the font or change the font and the color. Right now it's by layer. I have the ability for bold, italic, underline. If these are grayed out, it means that these options are not available for the font that you've chosen. Looking under the fonts, you'll notice the symbols. I have TT and then I have this little compass symbol. The TT or Windows True Type fonts the ones with the little uh, compass on them are AutoCAD or SHX fonts. If you're worried about being able to exchange fonts with older versions, then you want to stay with the AutoCAD fonts rather than using TrueType fonts. I can go down into my box and and I can start typing. I'm going to reproduce this note right here about the casting. So I'll start typing uh, casting notes unless otherwise specified. And you notice that it auto wraps. When I get to the end of the line just like your word processor, it will wrap. But I have my arrows here at the end, so if I stretch my text box, then um, it takes the wrap out of it. And you can do that while you're working. Now I need to enter a fraction. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see better. And here I have to add a fraction, so I'm going to type 1 slash 2 for my inches and you notice I get my auto stack properties box opens and right now it will if I enable auto stacking it will stack vertically my fraction and it can remove the leading blank space so I'll say OK and now I have stacked fractions in this case it would be one half inch materials thickness. Now if I want to uh, edit that, if you highlight and I right click, notice that on my shortcut menu I have unstack and I have my stack properties box. So if I wanted to come back later and unstack those, I, have to, I can highlight it. As with any of my word processing, the words themselves have to be highlighted in order for my editing to take place. So if I want these underlined, I have to highlight the area that I want underlined before clicking on it. So we'll go to the next item, which is a uh, radius 1 8 inch 
and again I get my stack. Now this time I'm going to choose differently because I don't want to remove that leading blank. I want that to stay there. But it will stack for me. Fillets. Now on the next one I have a 1.5 and this is a degree. So to work with symbols I'm going to go to my insert symbol and in this case off the list I'll choose degrees and it enters that in for me. Uh, 3.0 and again I'm going to add this symbol for degrees. And uh, now I need to put in some tolerances specifications and this needs to be a plus or minus one degree. Well again I should be able to find these on my symbol list. Here's my plus or minus and it's plus or minus one degree angular. Now you notice that these are numbered list so I'm going to highlight this list and under paragraph I have a numbering option. I'm going to click there and it can be numbered, it could be lettered, or it could be bulleted. I'm going to say numbered. And in the case of this last one I wanted this all to be under 4. So I'm going to click down here and backspace and then hit the tab. And now I notice that I've done this all in lowercase um, letters and I want it all in capitals. So I could highlight all of my text, right click, and change the case. I want to change to all uppercase. And all of my letters are changed into capital letters. To end my M text, I use the close text editor and that ends. To edit this text I would double click and it opens my text editor. You'll notice that under my options I have a drop down menu and this has many of the same options that I see on my uh, ribbon panel but this is just another way to access them. When I close the text editor and click once on my text, you notice it comes up as a block of text. This block of text can be moved or it can be resized with its grips. But it always works as a block and whatever I do to this block happens to this all the text that is inside of it. I can also use my multi-line text editor to insert fields that will automatically fill in information that's taken from the drawing or from my computer. So for example down here on the title block I have a date and I would like the date to be saved and be current whenever it's opened. In this case I'm going to check to see what the uh, text style was used on the title block and it says that it was times and it gives me the size. So I'm going to start my multi-line text tool and I'm going to work down here in the date box and then I'm going to change this text style to times so it matches the other text styles. And then into this box I'm going to insert a field here on my insert I'll choose field and I have a list. In this case I can get a, uh, a current date or I could put in the save date and it will enter the date when the uh, drawing is saved. 
So now it's automatically inserted in there for the last time this drawing was saved. And I'll close the text editor. Now, this doesn't line up exactly the way I want, so I'll click on it and right click and use my move. And I'm going to uh, line this up with my other objects. And you notice that it's gray. The gray tells me that this is a field that will be filled in. And so we will go ahead and we will save. And the next time this is opened, then the, the new save date will show up.